So with Chinese boxing and your boxing background, do you think what offensively then did that allow, bring into your, your MMA skill set? Because you look at that, that knockout of Mark Jones, I think it's probably the greatest knockout still mm. in the promotion's history. And we, we know you're such a fantastic striker. Mm. Would you say that's because you have such an eclectic background in effective forms of striking? Mm. I don't know, man. I got a hard head. <laughs> so, so you know, that's, that's sort of the gift I've been given. Um, that was seven years ago. Yeah, that, 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 that was, was long, yeah, that 2010. Was I'll tell you the biggest benefit to Sanchao is now, you know, you hear a lot about uh, sort of the general strategy to deal with a kicker. Mm. Uh, you got to check the kicks. You got to close the boxing range. But how do you do that? If a guy's a really good kicker, he can keep you out. Mm. Um, now there's, there's no way for a guy, I can force that boxing match. If we're a kicking range, I can close to boxing. If we're a clinching range, I can open up to boxing. Right. And, you know, I got really good at forcing that distance. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I have to say. No, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely true. Um, is Sancho, there's something that's still very close to your heart. Do you still train anymore? Look, I mean, there's, you know, that comes back to that thing about styles. You know, there's... there's ways to deal with things. Mm. Um, and Sanchao has some really, really clever ways to deal with kicks, to deal with punches, there's some understanding of timing that doesn't really exist in, yeah. in uh, sort of traditional coaching. Um, so, you know, Sanchao, I think is brilliant. I think it's a fantastic sport. You know, if you watch the Sanchao highlights, there's a, clean, there's a Christmas to it yeah. with kicks that doesn't really exist in any other sort of kicking art. Uh, and that's what makes it so cool. You know what I mean? It is a really cool stuff. I, I think it's really underestimated because I think you can find there's a lot of other mixed martial artists mm. out there mm. who actually have a background in Chinese boxing mm. and Chinese kickboxing. Mm. There's Dion Brunning, who's fighting mm. at Sun City, for example, mm. has, has a background in mm. Chinese mm. boxing. Mm. And I think it's very underestimated in terms mm. of that a lot of people have dabbled with it and mm. it's really a, a effectively contributed something to their, their all round skill set. Talking about that, mm. You're building quite a, a fascinating bunch of guys up at mm. uh, Fight Sports Center. You're mm. training with Kazumola Zulu, mm. uh, training with Umpi Zubeko. What's, mm. what's going on at Fight Sports Center? There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of things happening there. Well, there, yeah. are, there are things happening. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to pick up fighters. You know, it's always, for me, it's Fight Sports Center, right? We're going to produce fighters. Yeah. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter whether it's kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, whatever it is. Even guys from other gyms who want to come in and just do their strength and conditioning with us, I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, any way we can lift the whole game, I'm happy to do. Um, you know, and, and guys have just sort of found their way in where we've had very experienced Muay Thai fighters come in, very experienced boxing guys come in. Uh, and, and they've just sort of found their way there. You know, when, when I was with Durant, there were, there were five guys who really stood out for me. Right? Three of them were older guys uh, who, who had won world titles. You know, there was Takalani, Glovu, uh, Simpio Evocheka, and Murutim Talani. You know what I mean? There were other excellent guys, but for yeah. me, those three guys really stood out, probably because they gave me the most pastings. Um, <laughs> and there were, there were two lighties that stood out. One of them was Ludumo Lamati. Uh, Ludumo is now two, two farts away from a world title. He's just won an SA title. He's already holding an African title. This guy is unbelievably good. And I was, you know, when, when we had just moved in in November, I was opening up the gym, I don't know, to clean the toilets or whatever I was going to go and do. Yeah. And I, hey, Brendan, I turn around and there's Ludumo. You know what I mean? Looking for somewhere to train. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting into boxing. So long as the Durants are in boxing, I won't be. Yeah. Um, you know, but now we're working closely with, with Ludumo's trainer, Rocky. Uh, Rocky Weinstein, he has his boxing gym in Edenval. Uh, Damien Durant and, and myself all working with Ludumo to, you know, to help him as much as I can. Fantastic. You know, and you've got Nkazimullah Zulu there in your mm -hmm. camp now. Mm -hmm. um, what are you working on? When's it, do you, when's it, I don't know even when his next bout is because the whole JB base fight didn't, didn't work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something about Zulu. We were, we were at Damien the other day and, and uh, one, of the, one of the trainers there. Now, this guy's been around a long time. Right? He's coached the SA team. He's been, he comes from, I think, Malawi. You know what I mean? He's, he's produced world champs before. Yeah. You know, he's got an alpha talent. He says to me, Zulu must leave MMA and come to boxing. He'll be a world champion. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. So, and he, he could be. He's really good. Um, so I go back to the gym and I say, hey, Zulu, this is what this guy said. He says, you must, you must come to boxing. He says, no, I'm not going to come to boxing. Every gym I go to, they say that. Really? <laughs> Jits, wrestling, whatever. You know what I mean? I've wrestled with him since he's been back. His wrestling is unbelievable. Yeah, he worked a lot with Henry Cejudo, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, and, and Henry States. Cejudo is good, cracking wrestler. That was yeah. Olympic. Olympic wrestler. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But so his kickboxing is just some of the best. I mean, his Muay Thai background is fantastic. Yeah. So he's, he's coaching Muay Thai at Fight Sports Center, isn't uh, he? Yeah, he, he runs uh, Muay Thai classes for us. Uh, he also offers private sessions, semi-private sessions. You know what I mean? And uh, he's, he's a really good coach. He's a clever guy. He has a, a very good way of explaining things. He has a very good understanding of where somebody is at and what they need to do to go from here to yeah. here. Uh, and he's very good at transmitting it. And he's a funny dude. Though. It's an nice training. Yeah, he's an interesting character. We had him on the show a few months ago yeah. uh, when he came back. It was yeah. great. And it's, 
I really like what the, the facility, I really like what you're building there. And if you want to just take a look, you can go to at the bottom of our screen, it's fightsportscenter.com, and just take a look at what Brennan's doing over in Norwood. So if you're Melrose Arch or, or Rosebank in that area yeah, of Norwood, no, 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 you, yeah, Houghton, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it looks a great place to train. Kevin Perko, you're also training him as well. He's got a fight coming up at Sun City on Fortnite, hasn't he? How's he looking? He's looking good, man. He's, uh, you know, we don't do hard sparring in the gym, but, but things happen. You know, when yeah. you understand timing, you understand movement, things happen. You know, he's given two guys concussions in the last two weeks. You know, so those guys are now off their fights. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but Kev's looking good. He's looking dangerous. Um, yeah, he's taking on Faiz Jacobs, isn't he? Yeah, he's taking on Faiz Jacobs. Uh, you don't want to say anything more. That's fine. That's great. What can we expect from Stephen May in the future? Because he won the Fight Stars uh, title a few weeks ago, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Steven, Stephen's been with me for about eight years. Um, he's only ever trained with me. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that he's he sort of brought the first belt into... Fight Sports Center, you know, it's like it's like a nice little bit of fate that the way they played out. Uh, he's very talented, he's very hardworking, he's an intelligent guy, um, you know. So so he can he can take this game as far as he wants to, mm. you know what I mean? Uh, he will, you know. We're going to do a couple of pro boxing matches, then we're going to move him into into MMA, uh, and and I'm excited to see to see what he can do. Hey? He's, a, he's also a very nice guy. He's a lawyer. How's his ground game? You're teaching him on that. Yeah, his, his ground game's on point. Eh? His ground game's really good. So who else you got on your fight team at Fight Sports Center? Uh, there's Umpi Sebeko. Uh, we got a couple of really good amateurs coming through. Um, Sean Taylor's with us. Mm -hmm. Now, Sean fought at, uh, at Fight Stars on the same night as Steve. He was also fighting for a title. And he, he basically he got whipped for two rounds until the ref stopped the fight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was watching him the entire, the entire fight. Uh, in between rounds, you know, I looked into his eyes in the corner and I, you know, my whole adult life, I've been reading people's faces and seeing yeah. how close they, are, close they are to breaking. Uh, Taylor didn't, he, mentally, he didn't move. He was ready, he was strong from beginning to end. And that fight, I mean, guys would have broken in the first minute of the first round. Mm -hmm. And Taylor fought that fight hard until the ref stopped it. Um, so, you know, as far as, as courage goes, you know, and that's the first of the virtues. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as courage goes, Taylor's got, he's unbreakable, man. He's absolutely unbreakable. So I'm very proud of him for that. Uh, Steve also, he won his title that night, he fought a good fight. He would have had an easy fight if he took the guy to the ground and held him down. And, and he did in the fourth round just to smash him up a little bit. Yeah. But then he kept the fight standing because it was a challenge for him and he enjoys a challenge. You know? uh, so I'm very proud of him for, for fighting that fight the way he did, for, for winning the fight. He handled the, the win well. You know, I'm very proud of him for that. Now Taylor, th this is what I'm most proud about on the night. Taylor ended up getting stitches on his nose. Um, so. I was going. I was going to the hospital to go and check on him afterwards and wherever. Right. Uh, Steve asked me where I'm going. I said to him, listen, I'm going to the hospital. He says, cool, I'm coming. Next thing I know, there's 20, 30 guys arriving. <laughs> what, just the hospital? Just, just at the, the hospital. Waiting for this guy till after the night because he's getting stitches. Wow. Yeah. And that's all, all you guys from your gym and your yeah. team? That was that's fantastic. We yeah. was, I've spoken to you a few times in the past, Brandon, when you're competing. Yeah. And I've got to be honest with you, I've never heard you this passionate about yeah. MMA as a leader and a coach mm. and a mentor mm. as you were as a fighter. Do you think that's fair? Um, man, I love the game. You know what I mean? So now I can, uh, you know, before I was tweaking myself. I was trying to figure out, you know, wh what I need to do and where I need to go and whatever. Mm -hmm. Now I'm working with, like, th there's guys who are very experienced, guys like Keb Peko, uh, Umpi, Zulu. You know, there's guys who are really experienced. Uh, and, and so I'm just trying to, I, I don't have to coach them much, to be honest. You know, Zulu, I just drop him to sparring. You know, go do this, go do that. He does it and he comes back better. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but there's, there's guys who are coming in and they roar. You know what I mean? Uh, we, have, we have one kid who, who trains with us. He did a white collar boxing match not long ago. He's been training with me since November. So he had about five months or six months of training, his first white collar boxing. He fought a guy with four years experience and he made this guy look silly. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's, it's satisfying when guys come through and they've been developed in you know, the sort of the, the way I coach. Mm. And then we see it in action, we see it working very, very well. Yeah. That's very satisfying. And then when, when you take a guy like Kev, he said to me a few times, you know, he understands the game, you know what I mean? But the way that I explain things in this sort of theoretical framework, he says it's just helped him unload his tools that yeah. much better. Yeah. You know, he understands how and when and why and all of that, it's just much, much clearer. That's what you want. Isn't it? So, what's the future for you, Brandon? Like, what is the future of Cats MMA and, and, and Fight Sports Center? Um, well, Cats MMA is, is sort of a dead brand now. Uh, Fight Sports Center, you know, we the, the plan is basically to take over the world. So, you know, when uh, I have the I have the utmost respect for for Monifus and CRT and and you know. Uh, uh, Tilla and all the coaches there and all the fighters there, they, they're world class. Same thing with FFM and Richie and Norman, those guys are, are they, they've built really, really strong gyms. But it irritates me when guys say those are my competitors because um, those aren't the guys who I long term intend being competitive with. 
You know, right now they're up here and I'm down here. Yeah. You know, so I've got a lot of catching up to do. But I intend to catch up. I intend to overtake them. And, you know, when guys talk about Fight Sports Center, I want them to talk about it in the same sort of breath they talk about, like, American top team. And uh, for us, I have his gym, Trostar. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's the sort of thing that, that, that's the sort of caliber that I want the gym mentioned. I want to get it to the point where guys are coming from overseas to come in and work the MMA with me, uh, with the gym. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that we have, you know, that, that I think sort of sets us apart a little bit is that I want to produce champions in every different combat sport. You know, it's not MMA center, it's yeah. fight sports center. Yeah. You know, so whether guys are in MMA or kickboxing or boxing or wrestling or grappling or whatever it is, you know, I want to produce champions in those sports. Uh, and I want to work with champions in those sports. You know, like, you know, Ledumo, we, we take care of his strength and conditioning. He does his boxing with Rocky and Damien. Rocky primarily, oh. um, but he does his strength and conditioning with me. I'm happy to work with any boxer, happy to work with any kickboxer, you know, any wrestling guy, any MMA guy, anybody who wants to come in and do strength and conditioning, they can come and do it. And we have, we have a guy who's a qualified sports scientist who does it. You know what I mean? So it's not like, uh, let's do some burpees and see what happens. You know, we, get, we properly periodize programs. You know, it's, it's top, top level stuff. Hey? Cool. Top level stuff. Going to take over the World Fight Sports Centre. Aim right. as high as possible. You That's heard it here on the clinch first. Brendan Katz. Let me, let me just add one more thing. Now, yeah. now the building that we're in, the, the space that we're in, used to be Nick Durant's gym. Right. Um, mm, okay. So there's sort of a sense of legacy to it. Um, you know, Nick produced 167 champions or 169 champions yeah. or something like that. 38 world champions. <laughs> It's incredible. Incredible, man. You know, you, you look at Manny Pacquiao. Manny yeah. Pacquiao's coach, Freddie Roach. Yeah. 28 world champions. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It gives you a context. It gives it? you context. Uh, Nick's rated as one of the greatest boxing trainers worldwide ever. So we got big shoes to fill. And you've inherited that space. And that, that gives you what motivation, a, a, a legacy of history. Yeah, there's, there's a sense of legacy to it. But also, I mean, there's, there's just like weird things just keep happening. You know, Luduma arriving at the gym. Uh, Richie Fraser, the, the sports scientist, he arrived at the gym. I don't, I don't know this guy from Boris Hope. He arrived, he's got his qualifications, he's got his experience in MMA. You know what I mean? He's like, listen, I want to bring stuff and I want to help out. And he's got high-tech equipment. So he's saying that these, these, there are coincidences? It's, it's coincidences. <laughs> it's or are you saying that, that the hand of Nick Durant is on your shoulder in some way? Well, look, I mean, we opened up before Nick died. Um, there's, there's other stuff that's happened. You know, I threw one of the guys out of the gym. So what happened was we had, I'm not going to mention names, everybody will put together who it was, right? Sure. So uh, we had a guy in the gym, uh, Nick passes away on Friday, Saturday morning, I get a message from, <coughs> from my wife to say, hey, listen, go look at your Facebook, right? So I go look, there's a mes message from Norman Vessels. Now, I don't have a relationship with the guy, I don't know him from Boris Soap, right? Yeah. Saying, hey, listen, this guy came back to the gym, we're not going to take him. You know, you can choose what you want to do with him. I'm just letting you know, which is the right thing to do. You know what I mean? I don't poach fighters. You know, poaching is a dick move. Yeah. Uh, so I phone, I phone Richie. I said to him, listen, what happened? He says, you did the same thing to, to them that, it, that I did to them initially, where uh, this guy had come to me. He said to me, he's looking for a new gym. He's told FFM he's leaving. Yeah. Um, you know, so I said, cool, come to me. No problem. Turns out he hadn't told him yet. He had already jumped ship. Uh, so that's sort of lack of integrity. You know, it's not acceptable. Chucked him out. Um, the, the, the thing that makes this a funny story and like a weird coincidence is that my son, <laughs> who was a year and six months, found this message on my Facebook, on my wife's phone, in my junk mail folder. My oh, word. That's and crazy. And after Nick died. Yeah. <laughs> that is that. strange. Fantastic story. Brandon Katz, are really building something for the future. I'm really excited to see yeah. what you bring to this. Your, your contribution to the sport in this country yeah. continues. Yeah. Congratulations and thanks very much for coming in. Cool. Simon, thanks for having me. Thanks, Brandon. Cool, man. Well, that's a lot for this week's episode of The Clinch. Don't forget you can get hold of us through all the usual social media accounts. If there's anything whatsoever that you want to share or you want to see, please get hold of us. Join me next week for more insight, features and interviews. Thanks for watching. Be good. <laughs>